Welcome, everyone. Welcome to WordCamp. This, I'm Vivia. I will be introducing your speakers this afternoon. First, I would like to give and acknowledge that we are on the unceded and ancestral territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waithan Nation. Our, speaker to the, our first speaker this afternoon is Aaron Day, and he will be talking to us about harnessing the power of ja chat GPT-4 for WordPress publishing. So please give a hand to Aaron Day. Greetings in the name of Ja Rastafari. <laughs> Welcome to WordCamp and blessings to our indigenous brothers and sisters for letting us use this land for this purpose today. Thank you. I am an AI whisperer. That means I'm a prompt engineer. And it's my great honor and privilege to introduce and explain more about the most preeminent artificial intelligent language model known today, and that is ChatGPT. So I'm going to show you how we're going to harness the power of this new technology. But first, I want to set the stage a little bit and uh, provide some background, some way background. In the beginning was the Word. We all know that, right? Our world is made up by words and ideas. And everyone here today is because of shared ideas and words, and that's why we're here. So WordPress publishing software is an open source evolution of a printing press. Anyone can have their own press nowadays, and pretty much every minute somebody starts a new blog, good, bad, or ugly. But everyone has a, a big market, and they can get started. Johannes Gutenberg he was the inventor of the press, as we know. He would be in awe of what we have done with his idea. 570 years later, we're celebrating 20 years of WordPress. So to honor the invention of movable type and Gutenberg, uh, we even named some of the components inside WordPress Gutenberg blocks. And it's sort of like movable type where we're able to move the blocks around instead of the type. Amazingly, Gutenberg, he needed a way to make money from his invention. And he got the idea, in case you didn't know this, by creating playing cards. So he just imagine a 52 card deck they created templates and stamped each one to make and he thought why don't we do that with the language so he created the movable type with the letters but uh, still it costs a lot of money for this invention they didn't have them you couldn't order it there wasn't paper no one knew that they needed anything printed so what did he do he found a language model, and that's called the Gutenberg Bible. It's 142 lines of Latin. So again, there wasn't, there wasn't paper uh, widely available, and it was very difficult to get this invention going. So he started printing this Bible. And then the other thing that he did, and I find this quite ironic, was he printed indulgences, which if you know the history of Protestant movement, et cetera, it, it was um, Martin Luther that uh, created the uproar and the protest against all these indulgences. So it might be said that Gutenberg created the first spam with all these indulgences. And 
the first fraud because they must have been everywhere. And uh, by the time Martin Luther was born 100 years later, uh, after Gutenberg, and uh, they had to get rid of this indulgence model. Anyway, and then King James got his printing presses and improved the language model by adding the numbers, the verses, the chapters, and he put in the middle a study area that connected these ideas to help the reader um, connect the ideas. So that's the first language model. And we've got the perfect marriage of a printing press and a language model. So once again, we've got this really good marriage. And so I'm going to try to move through the slides quite quickly so we can do an actual um, demonstration. But what WordPress is, I wanted to just give it a little bit more background because I love it. I've been using it for years. There's nothing like it, in my opinion. There's all kinds of comparative tools, but it's because it's open source. And open source, is, it's just so fundamental to our moving forward in this world if we keep things that everyone can add to it. So it has, right now, without themes or without um, any plugins, it's about 170,000 lines of code. So I asked Bing AI how many words in a line of code, and it, it told me that it would be about 1.25 million words make up the WordPress software. And anyone can open it up and read it and look at it, change it, break it, which I did lots in the early days. I learned actually not to get in under the hood, trust the programmers and leave it alone as it is. But uh, so it's just anyone can use it. It's got 40% of the world's websites are created with it. And there's thousands of ways to customize it. But this is a really big breakthrough to add this chat GPT to it. Next slide. Uh -oh. As you can see, I'm not much of a technologist. So here's what we're going to go through very quickly in these following slides, just to understand it, how to integrate it, what the features are, how to, how to generate uh, content, and some of the other uses that we have. So in our introduction of it, it's really just an advanced language model. And uh, that's what I wanted people to be more confident with, is that it's not some kind of a robot or um, you know, people have from the Terminator movie that it's s created some kind of a evil robot. Oh, sorry. Sure. Thanks for saying. Did everyone else hear me okay? Static. So it can be used in all sorts of ways in WordPress, but we're going to look at the three primary ways that we're using it now. It's first a language model, and I think that's the most important thing, and that's why I used uh, the Bible as a comparison, because really it's just a massive database of ideas that are connected together. Uh, when 3.5, which was the initial uh, free model, and it's still the free model, it had read 2 billion web pages. So it basically taken those 2 billion web pages and more or less connected them through databases. And the natural language processing, NLP mentioned, that's the really exciting part of this because as you're using it, it's learning with you. 
and actually learning from you uh, with the prompts. And the prompts is the most important part of using the language model. Everyone's heard this expression in the computer or, or programming field, garbage in, garbage out. Nowhere does it apply better to these chat models. If you put in lousy prompts, you're going to get out really dry, boring material. So the, the natural language processing is incredible. And the GPT architecture is explaining basically how it, how it works. It's a little bit deeper, but uh, again, it's code, very similar to WordPress. So the installation process to integrating ChatGPT, I'm going to show you a little more at the end uh, because we have them now in plugins. So the plugins can very, very quickly be added to anybody's WordPress, WordPress blog. And we'll show you some plugin options when we get towards the end here. So what the engines are, the three main engines that I talked about, Advanced context understanding really relates to the improving of your ideas. And by the way, what I often do is I'll open another tab beside my chat GPT and I'll use Google because Google has an AI built in. If you were searching for this, other people were asking this. And by the way, all of us have been using AI for a really long time. Uh, on your phone, when, it, when you're filling in a name and it puts it there, that's AI. So AI's been around quite a long time and we all use it, but not such powerful language model as we're looking at here. Multilingual support is incredible um, because we used to use uh, Google Translate and it, it just made so many mistakes that you had to have uh, someone from the, the language to proofread it. And they would find all kinds of uh, contextual mistakes and grammatical errors. Uh, ChatGPT, I don't know why or how, but it's really superior to any translation software I've seen. I work with people from Vancouver of Chinese origin, and I can switch things to either Mandarin um, or Cantonese quite easily, or any other language. Uh, the developer API is quite technical. Um, and there are a lot of APIs I'm going to show you in a minute in the plugins. But it's a, it's a different um, level of understanding is needed to develop APIs. And we're, we're just not going to go there today. We don't have the time. But that's the third uh, aspect of what can be done with ChatGPT to enrich your WordPress site. So the most fun part is creating content. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, website copy and uh, generating ideas, it's incredible because as you prompt it for one topic, it'll generally provide you some clues for further topics. And again, if you open another tab, you can search. Sometimes you have to even um, find out what it had just told you, search and then go deeper. So again, it's about the prompts and about uh, finding a way to communicate with the language model to make it give you deeper meaning to what it is you're trying to explore. And uh, to me, this is the most fun part, is creating the content. I'll get to that in a minute. So the other ways that it's being used an awful lot is um, human review. But on, on this slide, 
the big fault that people are finding with it is what is called hallucinations. And where I have found it to make hallucinations is with um, numbers. When you try and do a, like a corporate uh, statement, it'll pull a number from somewhere else and uh, you have to proofread everything, but the only time where I have seen these, as they call hallucinations, is when it comes to um, giving us corporate details of numbers, dollar earnings, things like that. You have to be very careful whenever you ask it to do uh, anything to do with numbers. And I've got a prompt that has some numbers in it, so we'll see if it's gonna hallucinate for us in a minute. So this is the other place where it's finding a lot of use, is in the streamlining of systems uh, online. A lot of uh, websites are adding it in to help um, with product sales or with uh, customer service. There's so many different uh, uses for it in the streamlining of the business systems. And of course, it does a lot of review for mistakes, and it just helps to make everything tighter. I find that it, it, uh, it writes very succinctly without flowery words, unless you ask it to write in a flowery way. Uh, for example, in a prompt, sometimes I say, write me a Hemingway-style story about whatever the topic might be. And it's quite surprising how, um, well, I'll use the word flowery, how, how interesting it'll write. Instead of just dry and boring, it can, it can write some very creative, very imaginative uh, articles for you. So the other thing is, is people are starting to actually chat, like develop a relationship with it. And I had talked to someone last night that told me they heard of a person putting 10 years of their journal entries into ChatGPT and asking, what happened to my relationship? <laughs> and it, <laughs> and it told me, thank you for that. And I thought that was so interesting. And it, it could potentially predict the future based on what you've been doing the last 10 years. Uh, but people are finding these really creative, interesting ways to communicate with this language model. And I really think we're only beginning to understand what, what we can do with it. And, uh, hopefully mostly good, and that's why I'm here. I want to steer us towards uh, using it for good, and I'll get to that. And this is huge, data privacy and security. Probably one of the biggest uh, issues we all face, and part of it is because of AI, uh, part of it is because of the malicious um, sort of intent of some of the people using the internet anonymously. So as we move forward, we're going to see AI used more and more for uh, determining if a person is who they say they are. And if the data is theirs, and if, if it's real. So this is a really uh, a, a promising area for the future and something I'm quite excited about. So basically, the best practices for optimizing content, collaborating, and continuous improvement. Um, you can basically improve anything you're working on by having it either uh, write an overview of it or add to it, addendums. There are just a, a really an incredible number of ways we can use ChatGPT. 
So this is the part where we go to my own, if I can get out of here, examples. So I have, uh, well, first I'll show you uh, the plugins. There we are. So, oh, I just killed my PowerPoint. Um, this is a list of some of the AI plugins available for WordPress. And again, I can click on any of these and add it directly into my website. And this website we're looking at is, uh, uh, I developed this website starting in 1994 so it's coming on 30 years old. And it provided the perfect um, sandbox or testing ground to learn ChatGPT. And the reason is I have these categories right here, asset protection collectibles, and each one of those I can get into a deeper story. And I just couldn't believe how powerful it was and, and how it just kept giving me more and more ideas. So that is one case scenario that I've had enormous success with Invest Offshore and uh, writes about cryptocurrency really well. and anything else. So what I've done is I've created a prompt. Write an article with population estimates and trends about expats living in Vancouver. And this is for anyone who's never watched it live before. This might be your first demonstration. So here we go and hope it works. Oh, no. <laughs> Interesting. Let's... There it goes. By the way, I can't type that fast. <laughs> I wish. Maybe no one can. Stinking. And then it wants us to review it. And what you'll notice is that I've, I've saved all of my past posts, and, and that's part of the reason for going to 4.0, the, the paid version, is because by saving all of your past, you can go back, and when you want to dig deeper uh, into a, a particular story, I've done a lot of study on Mexico. I'm very interested in uh, the cross-border. By the way, investing offshore, if you didn't realize, if anyone has a home in Arizona, you're offshore if you're a Canadian. And anyone who has a place in Vancouver who's from the US, you're offshore. And that's how we define an expat. Uh, so I continue going deeper into these particular topics and it gets richer and richer as I go. So now, It there.
So I'm going to add an image. Which I got earlier today, so we wouldn't have to uh, go through this. And boom, just published an article. Uh, so the entire world can see. There it is, a brand new story. And with RSS, real simple syndication, it blasts out across all of the social networks and all around the world. So people are reading this uh, already, uh, and we just created it in that length of time. I had the picture ready already, naturally, but there's the story. That is a good uh, question, and so far I haven't been. Uh, and normally I edit a little bit to give it my own, especially the titles, and uh, make a few little changes. Um, the site itself, I'm making it clear to the reader that it's AI generated, but in Europe they're already talking about putting in laws in the GDPR for uh, separating AI-generated content and human content. Eventually, human content is going to be on the rise because people are already aware of what it suits my particular website and topic uh, because people want that the facts and they don't come here to read stories they're coming here to get you know factual content but as I'm close to running out of time I want to leave you with the conclusion and the key takeaways the ability to generate high quality content that's the key takeaway and to en enhance your experience so I have used up my time, but I open for Q&A, if anyone else has any questions. And one over here. Hi, my name is Imran. Uh, my question is that I've heard sometimes if the content is not available or the information is not available, uh, ChatGPT uh, kind of fakes it. Uh, the first question is, is that true? And if it is, uh, how reliable is ChatGPT when requesting for content? Well, yeah, this uh, hallucination thing it was a bigger problem in 3.5 than it has been in 4.0. You have to proofread, and you have to proofread diligently because some topics it will stretch, and uh, especially I'd noticed it with numbers, you know, uh, with corporate earnings and things like that. It'll pull a number. And if you go and look on the actual uh, company's um, documents, it's way off. So that's one concern. <laughs> Thanks for the presentation. Um, is there any way you can s you can tell whether it's the Chat GPT is the article is AI generated versus human input? Well, that is a good question. Because last night there was a, a group of us at, uh, at a private event for the speakers, and we were discussing just that, that it seems to be getting dumber, that a lot of people are saying. And a lot of us can tell right away when it's AI generated. So that's why it's important to have really good prompts, uh, but also if you get in there yourself and change it and Im improve it and uh, add a quote, add, add some uh, other people's observations, and you can en enrich it. But this is something that, and also it goes to the, the search engines themselves eventually are going to mark uh, this is content is uh, AI generated. So that's what the future looks like. Uh, 
Thank right. you for talking. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I, too, have been using this chat GPT or AI engines for a couple of years. Um, and we're looking for efficiencies. Have you noticed if any of the um, plugins that you talked about are better than others? Oh, the plugins. Um, the first thing that I didn't like about plugins is that you have to have an API account and you have to have uh, a key. And if you don't have tokens in your account, it won't work at all. So you have to load up um, your API account with tokens if you want to add. Uh, but the one that I showed There's one that is much better. It's got uh, 50,000 downloads. And where is it? This. AI engine, the cat, has 40,000 active subscribers. And I, I found that one to be the best. And that's why WordPress has put it right up in the top left corner. So that'll integrate straight into your site. But you need to have the tokens in your account for people to be able to use it. It's worth learning it, though, because it's very cool to watch it inside the site. Uh, one follow-up question. Have you tried um, image generation? That's usually one of the slowest yeah. parts of creating content for us. With you know, you want the images to help tell the story. <clears throat> yeah, I'm learning a lot about it, and I'm I'm trying to master it. Uh, and I learned last night that um, Dolly or Dali has integrated with ChatGPT. So uh, soon as you're preparing an article, you'll be able to um, use Dali to provide you the, the uh, image for it. But what I don't like about DALI is um, the perspective. I wished it was landscape perspective instead of a square. Uh, it's fun. A again, it works on credits, and you only can have 30 cracks at it a month, which you can use that up, I don't know, in an hour. Uh, but there's a lot of other image generating AI that um, Firefly was one that uh, I just heard about that's superior even to DALI. So we're going to see more and more of that. It seems to be f more popular than the language. The language has taken almost uh, students and uh, it's just a tool. People grabbed it right away. Whereas the image one is more fun and it's uh, uh, really amazing what people are generating. So we're seeing more and more of it. My last question. <laughs> I have a, you mentioned, you touched a little bit on the nefarious use of this chat AI depending on the people's intent. Um, do you see any regulations that are coming forward that will restrict some of that behavior? Absolutely. Uh, and there was just recently uh, Elon Musk has put forward with lawmakers to create a department of AI. It'll be necessary. Um, but I realized when I learned about Gutenberg and the um, indulgences that that was completely unpredicted. Like no one could have predicted what would happen if you started printing out all these indulgences. But imagine people would be scalping them, selling them, uh, and that that's what caused the Protestant movement was uh, all of these fake things. So the reason I say that is we're going to learn about nefarious problems that we never even imagined, but they're going to come. So we need to be on guard.
just curious if you used any plugins within the ChatGPT4 interface. Like, I played around with some like photorealistic um, plugins within ChatGPT that creates an image prompt for Midjourney, or um, like scraper tools or anything within ChatGPT4 itself. I've only tried the two that I showed you. Well, the the cat. Oh, no, I noticed there's a lot of plugins, though. So you're ahead of me on that. I need and to. Okay, Mid Journey is another one that I'd heard of a lot. Cool. Well, thanks for that. Hello. I'm, I'm wondering how many people in the room here could see themselves doing what you've just done, use chat GPT, copy and paste things into an article. If I could see a show of hands of how many people find themselves inclined to go that way. Yeah. I guess my concern here is, um, uh, what would you call it, writer's um, honesty or something? You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's almost like you're creating a, a snowball effect of, uh, of repetitive information that has been taken from original works to begin with that have been um, scoured off the net. And then you've got an engine that has been developed that is repeating this information and then people are re reusing that and putting it out there as though it's original information. And it just seems to me like we're going down a, a, a slippery slope here of, um, of, um, of, of not really using human creativity, um, but uh, just regurgitation. That is the biggest risk, really. Um, but what I believe it's going to do is make real writers more popular again. Uh, because we had reached a point of saturation of, um, call it uh, keyword rich, Google written, uh, dull, boring content. So hopefully, if we get the right regulations in place to uh, prohibit completely um, AI generated, or maybe not prohibit, but to um, identify what's human written and what's AI driven. But again, the thing I didn't mention about the Bible is that it is actually the cornerstone of literature in any language. It's the cornerstone of our society. And most everything after 1611 has been reused in one way or another. Uh, so there, you know, the original word has been used again and again and again differently. At the end of the day, it's all about the value that the end user gets. Uh, and it's uh, not as important who's creating fake content, but we're definitely going to need to have a discernment, uh, you know, and I, like I say, I think good writers are going to rise again because there will be an interest in human written. But I appreciate what you're saying. Uh, I want to leave you with one thing, too, that I've done, and I forgot to mention this, was I created a company called Lionsgate Digital, and I really went outside the box using AI because I took the concept of a 33 degree secret society and I said, emulate that, but make it open and transparent, which is the opposite of secret. And I've created a 33 level DAO, a DAO Decentralized Autonomous Organization. And it can be found right here, the Dow model on lionsgate.io. And the manifesto is also written using chat GPT and the member's oath and a defense policy. And what Lionsgate is about is protecting people's identity, self-sovereign ID. And I don't want to get too deep into that, and that's not why I'm here. 
but it's an example of what can be done by harnessing the power of ChatGPT in WordPress publishing. So I wish you'd take a look uh, when you get home, uh, lionsgatedigital.io, or lionsgate.io, thanks. I'll leave you with that, the expats in Vancouver. <laughs> well, thank you very much, everyone.